Hello everybody, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel where we discuss all things horror and horror related. And today I'm going to be giving my quick review of The Northmen. I was lucky enough to go to an advanced screening of this earlier this week. I got this cool t-shirt. It's a little big for me. It's kind of more of a, a night shirt, but, but that's okay. So even though I saw this film earlier this week, I wanted to take some time to think about it before giving my review. Similar to Robert Eggers' previous films, The Witch and The Lighthouse, it took me a couple days to digest the film, kind of think about what the hell did I just see? Did I like it? And I will say off the bat here, I am a fan of Robert Eggers and his previous work. I wasn't a huge fan of The Witch when I I first saw it. It took me a couple of rewatches to really get it. And now it's one of my favorite horror films of the past few years. I, I love that movie. And I really enjoyed The Lighthouse. But again, with The Lighthouse, it took me like a couple days to mull it over. I think what happened with this film is because it is such a larger scale than his previous films, and it's not strictly a horror film either. It's really more of this Viking historical epic. So even though I was liking what I was seeing while I was watching it, it still took me a couple of days to really think about it and get my thoughts in order of how I felt about the film. So The Northmen is about a Viking named Amleth. Am Amleth? I think that's how you say his name? So the film begins with Amleth as a child and he is next in line to take up the throne. His father is king. And then one day his uncle comes into the village and brutally murders Amleth's father and takes away his mother and pretty much destroys his whole village. The film then jumps in time a couple decades later to show us grown-up Amuleth, played by Alexander Skarsgård. He has become a ruthless Viking who raids villages. One night after raiding a village, he meets up with a seer, a, a kind of fortune teller, played by Bjork, and she essentially tells him that he has to go back to his village and avenge his father's death and save his mother as this is his destiny. This is what fate has in store for him. And so Amleth takes this message to heart. He leaves the village, leaves his Viking life behind and goes off to the village to find his uncle and avenge his father's death and save his mother. And of course, along the way, he meets up with Anya Taylor-Joy's character and they fall in love. So there's a love story aspect to this as well. So this is a narrative that we've seen countless times. Times, right? I'm sure if you're looking at reviews for The Northmen, you've seen countless people referencing this to Hamlet. There's also a little bit of Shakespeare's Macbeth kind of throughout the film. So this was one of the things I was a little nervous about going into the film. One of the things I love about Robert Eggers' work is just how original his stories are and how psychological they are. And so going into this, I was a little bit like, okay, you're giving us a story that we're all very familiar with. But I'm happy to say that even though the narrative is very familiar, it does have that unique Robert Eggers style to it. He does sprinkle in horror elements here and there. There are a lot of really just intense scenes where you have this like, drumming in the background and there's fire everywhere and you just have these extreme close-ups on characters faces and they just look insane. There's plenty of gore throughout. It's a very gory film so for those of you that love carnage you'll be happy with this. And like all of Robert Eggers films it is heavily steeped in historical accuracy. Characters are talking in the language of the time. And just as with The Witch and The Lighthouse, watching the film, I was sitting there just like, I have no idea what these people are saying, but I'm just gonna go along with it. And I was a little worried that the language piece of it might get a bit annoying, especially since this is over two hours long. But the film moves along at a very brisk pace. Despite its length, he moves the story along quickly. You're never spending too much time in one place. There was never a time throughout the film where I was like, oh, the scene is just dragging. Can we move along? No, it is very action packed. And he doesn't waste time with you know, exposition dialogue or trying to explain things to you. The story just moves and you have to pay attention in order to keep up with it. In fact, if I had one negative thing to say about this film, it's that 
I wish it did take its time in, in some scenes. I really enjoyed the characters in this film and I just wish that they had been maybe a little bit more developed. Obviously the motives of the protagonist are very clear, but there are other characters that I wish we could have gotten to know a little bit more. For example, Anya Taylor-Joy's character, she comes in and we learn a little bit about her throughout the film, but her role is primarily the love interest, right? She comes in, uh, her and Amalith meet, and it's kind of one of those things where they're instantly attracted to each other and they fall in love very easily, which is okay. It didn't detract from the story at all, but I would have liked to know a little bit more about her character. Same thing, and this is mega spoilers for the end, so if you haven't watched the film, skip ahead a couple of minutes. Uh, Nicole Kidman's character. Nicole Kidman plays Amalith's mother, and throughout the film, Amalith Amalith is like, I have to save my mother. I have to save her from my crazy uncle. And then at the midpoint of the film, probably in the third act, you find out that the mother actually betrays Amalith, that she actually begged the uncle to kill Amalith's father and kill him as well. Like she was never in love with Amalith's father. And so you have this whole betrayal storyline and I actually found it really fascinating. And I found Nicole Kidman's performance uh, well, she's amazing, of course, um, but I was just so intrigued by this character and again, just wanted to spend more time with her and learn a little bit more about her psyche, kind of what she was thinking. The thing I love most about Robert Eggers' previous films, The Witch and The Lighthouse, is the psychological elements. With the other two films, you know, we have these very contained spaces with only a couple of characters. And throughout each film, he really takes his time to show you the psychological decline of these characters. And that's what makes the story so disturbing and scary. Obviously, The Northman is on a much larger scale than either The Witch and The Lighthouse. You have a lot of characters coming in and out, so there's not really a lot of time for the psychological development, but I wish there was. I wish there was a little bit more to that. That being said, there's nothing in the film that I'm like, yeah, I would take that out in favor of more character development. I really like the film as it is. I really can't think of anything that I would remove from it. Um, if anything, I just wanted to spend more time in this world, which I think is a testament to Eggers' filmmaking. And speaking of the filmmaking, this is such a gorgeous, gorgeous film. Visually, it is stunning. This film is really going back to the old classic Hollywood historical epics where it's just giving you these larger than life scenes with this gorgeous scenery. One thing I particularly enjoyed in this film is the way the camera moves throughout scenes. Throughout the scenes, especially the action-oriented ones, the battle scenes, the camera just flows throughout all the action and it follows the action so smoothly. This is really one of those films that make you as the audience feel like you're in the scene with the characters. I know this film was shot digitally, but there were some scenes where I was watching it and I was questioning like, was this shot on film? Because it does have that texture a bit. That might have just been the theater I was watching it at and the screen I was watching it on. And I will say, uh, I'm not a huge fan of CGI, especially CGI in horror films, even though this really isn't technically a horror film, but I'm just not a huge fan of a lot of CGI. And while there was CGI here, there were scenes that were digitally enhanced. It didn't bother me. I actually didn't notice it. It wasn't until after when I was reading an article about the making of the film that I was like, oh yeah, there was CGI in this film. But again, I didn't really notice it. It's very seamless. And again, I think that speaks to Robert Eggers' very meticulous historical accuracy. Uh, it was very clear that while obviously some scenes were gonna need CGI here, he didn't wanna go overboard with it. Even though this is a grand historical epic, it feels very grounded. It feels very down to earth. It's not like 
you know, a crazy Marvel or DC movie where you're just having CGI all over the place. So yes, I loved the visuals. I loved the acting. I thought Alexander Skarsgård did a fantastic job in this film. It has a lot of that Robert Eggers dark comedy in it as well. But again, you really have to pay attention to what the characters are saying and what's happening in the scene. And I loved the whole Nordic mysticism aspect to it as well. Um, there definitely is some magical elements in here, definitely some callbacks to the witch. And similar to the CGI and technical aspects of the film, one of the things that I love about The Northman and just Robert Eggers films in general is that he does bring in these elements of mysticism and witchcraft and folklore, but again he never goes overboard with any of it. Again, it feels very grounded. It does feel like something that could happen in the real world. This isn't like Harry Potter magic. So I loved those elements as well. To be perfectly honest, I've spent the last few days after seeing this movie like just wanting to leave my responsibilities at work and go run into the woods and dance around a bonfire and just yell at the moon. It is one of those movies that will get you hyped up as a viewer. It's a film that's very much enjoying and having fun with the spectacle that it's presenting to you. And this is definitely one of those films where if you can, if you're able to, and it's safe enough for you, I would definitely recommend going out into a theater and seeing this film. This is a film to like to really get the full impact of it it's beneficial to watch on the big screen. This is a little cliched to say, but I'm gonna say it anyway. The Northmen really represents what cinema is supposed to be, in my opinion. So overall, I really loved The Northmen. I highly recommend it. If you haven't seen it yet, go out and watch it. This is the third movie from Eggers that, in my opinion, is just an absolute masterpiece. He's just such a craftsman in the way that he molds these movies together. And, you know, The Witch and The Lighthouse and The Northmen, they're all very different types of films, and it really shows how versatile he is as a director as well. So I'm really excited to see what his next film will be. He has not disappointed me yet. Okay, so those are my thoughts on The Northman. Did you see the film? If you did, what did you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.